Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire, and I'm super excited to be scrutinizing another video for you all today. This time we are going to China Lindy Hop Championships. This first competition I'm judging will be a solo jazz competition. I can't wait to see these dancers and give you the verdict. Let's get right into it. All right, China, here we go. Ooh, and they're dancing to a band. This is gonna be good. This is a pretty good warm up. They're not making them work too hard with the tempo. I tend to like it when they don't have tempos too fast early on. It kind of protects people from having to do Charleston when it's nice and mid-tempo. Yeah, there's so, much, so many more jazz moves than just doing the Charleston. That's what I really appreciate about this tempo. Do it! Here we go. I don't know why I'm getting nervous. Here we go. Oh, switching the camera up. This is good. Misha. <laughs> that was good. got low on that one. My knees would just buckle out from under me. <laughs> DQ! DQ! Sunshine. 
All right. We go. <laughs> See? <laughs> Hats do help. Hats do help. Oh! Here we go! Good 
job, guys. Let's get into this. All right, guys, this was pretty tough to look at. I must admit, whenever I judge solo jazz competitions, it's incredibly challenging. And it's a bit frustrating as a, as a dancer who loves solo jazz because I think solo jazz has kind of been limited in our modern times. I mean, obviously we have to memorize all the moves from the past um, and really kind of preserve those, but I'm not really seeing a lot of people take risk outside of the original moves. And it's really tough to do that and to make it look good because you got to really understand like why some of these moves look like they're vintage jazz. And what I like to tell people who are in the audience who may not know and other dancers how I judge these kind of competitions, I like to look at the torso. If the torso is more quiet than the lower part of your body, most of your movements will look like solo jazz. And this is because even back then, tap dancing was kind of like one of the more popular things. So most people moved their lower body more than their upper body. Yes, there's solo jazz movements that are a bit more campy where your upper body's moving a lot, but the majority of the movement is with the lower body. Now, the interesting part about this, I, when I do these solo jazz competitions, I used to do like top three, but in this kind of one, I, I wanna just pick the one winner. And the reason I'm sticking to, the, to the, the one winner is because not everybody was strong when it was slower and not everybody was strong when it was faster. Most of the couples were either better at the faster one or, or you know, not as good at the slower one, uh, slower tempo. But I think there was only one dancer that was satisfactory for me that could do the mid-tempo and still swing his movements along with doing the faster tempos and not losing the aesthetic of what vintage jazz dancing looks like. Needless to say, that was a hard decision. There was about three people who kind of Kind of won my heart over. And the winner for me, I'm going to have to say, was Misha. Misha. I knew kind of what Misha was doing, you know, when I first saw him come out at this point here. When he first comes out, the tempo's nice and slow. And what's interesting is I don't see him rushing at all. I don't see any, you know, struggle with, like, keeping up with the beat or moving ahead of the beat. He's swinging the notes, meaning he's, like, right behind the beat and it looks nice and relaxed. And so him going first was kind of like a high standard that was set. And so I was hoping someone could do the, the mid-tempo better than him. In a sense, when I say that word better, I mean who simply looks like they have more control of their upper body and their movements actually look vintage. So I also like this one that he did. He came out kind of shoving his partner out of the way and boom, goes right into some Charleston movement, squat Charleston. He's on beat. Look at his upper body. His shoulders aren't moving very much. He's keeping them parallel with the floor. And the timing on that was perfect. The, I think the musicians were kind of mirroring what he was doing. I love to see when musicians play with the dancers. And so his sets for me were the most balanced. I could clearly see the torso was isolated in most of his dancing. But what was most impressive with his dancing is that whenever it was slow, he was swinging the notes. I wasn't too surprised by everyone's movement as, as individuals. Most of everybody's movements seem pretty typical. I kind of thought, yeah, these are solo jazz movements. But I, there wasn't really any distinction in this competition. There was only a few people who did some moves that were different. Some person did a move like on the ground. Everybody went crazy. The audience loves it. Another guy just lifted his hat up and did a movement. Something different. People are blown away by the, the unexpected. The hard part in solo jazz is knowing what's okay that's unexpected, what's tolerable, what's respectable to the genre. And that is kind of hard thing. It's a very nuanced perspective that an original dancer has to have if they're doing swing dancing or is particularly solo jazz because we have the old movements plus we got to add our personality. So I think out of all of the dancers, he was my favorite. So big shout out to Misha. Um, what did you guys think? Who do you think was the one that had the most balance when the slow tempo and the fast tempo happened? Who do you think did both of those the best? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you haven't learned like some of the more fundamental basic jazz steps, I encourage you check out some of my free courses below. I got a ton of solo jazz courses to kind of help you understand why certain movements look like solo jazz and not just giving you a bunch of moves, but why you can actually do solo jazz with your own original movements 
and it looks really, really impressive, but yet still respectful. If you don't know the difference, then a lot of your movements will kind of look modern, like hip hop. So those classes really help you understand the difference on that. Anyway, let me know uh, what you guys thought about Misha's dance. And if you think there was a different winner, let me know in the comment section below. This is what I said. This is I'm a judge. This is what I like. And that's kind of what I go by. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I look forward to seeing you guys in class if you join our class and hearing your comments. Take care.